And greetings. Happy Friday. Welcome to the Steve Day Show here live and on demand on Blaze TV radio and podcast. I am Steve Dace alongside Todd Erzin and Aaron McIntyre joined by our good friend, New York talk show host, Shannon Joy. She'll be with us here in a few moments for the Dace Group. Coming up next hour, it will be a feedback Friday. But guys, you know, I love to lead off the show with one of two things. When, when either we have a new partner to the program or we've got a praise report for one of our partners. Mike writes, I've got a magic spoon testimonial. My wife got diagnosed with diabetes last year. Since then, she's lost 150 pounds and gotten her blood sugar and A1C down to normal levels. Of course, she had to cut down on sugars and carbs. That rules out the majority of the breakfast cereal she loved. So she decided to try magic spoon on a whim. She has enjoyed each kind she's tried, and best of all, none have spiked her blood sugar level. Maybe that's not the same for everyone, but I thought it was worth sharing for your audience. And again, that is from Mike, and we love to hear that, Mike. Um, They've got the variety pack, four flavors, cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter. Of those, I had a chance to try the peanut butter, man. It was very good. Okay, Uh, so uh, zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, four to five net grams of carbs and only 140 calories per serving. So high in protein, zero sugar, keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free. Doesn't have to mean taste free anymore. Go to magicspoon.com slash Dace. Grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use the promo code Dace at checkout to save five dollars off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it is backed with a hundred percent happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. All right, magicspoon.com slash Dace and use the code Dace to save five dollars off. Code Dace at magicspoon.com slash Dace. And with that, it is time for the day stream. Your weekly look at the week that was begins as it always does with issue one. Bleep Lord Nefarious says. Oh, here you go. You, you, got, you got people coming in now. Take a look at this. A lot oh, of young go. adult men being let through now. So every here person who was just let through is a uh, appears to be a single adult male. Brian, if we can turn around really quick. I don't know if they're all with the same group. Let me try to ask them really quick. Hola, hablas okay. español. ¿De dónde son? De donde son? Ghana. 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 You're from Ghana. This is a president that has taken historic action on an issue, uh, on a system that has been broken for some time. You're from Haiti. You're from Haiti. And so we have taken actions. We have taken multiple actions. Uh, but again, this happens. It ebbs and flows. That's what we see at the border. Por- pardon? Brazil. Brazil. You're from Brazil. When you come to New York, you're not going to have more hotel rooms. We don't have capacity. So we have to also message properly that we're at our limit. If you're going to leave your country, go somewhere else. Yeah, you, you, you can see that um, this is a group of what, I don't know, about 15 or so men who were just let through. We got some more being let through right now. How many people come, how many people illegally coming into the United States is enough for President Biden's like, what you, well, Enough for what? My feeling is they should open it, the border, and just let them pour in, let everybody pour in, and, and then the answer, which is, well, then there'll be all these problems. Yes, there should be. It shouldn't be so great here. It's not good for us either. It's not a good way to live in a gated community, you know? If, if you let folks pour in, like any other wave, it'll kind of slosh, and then you'll just, things will be different. I, I don't know, like, there, what'll really happen? A bunch of people, like, will they just come with knives and start <laughs> killing everybody? I don't think so. It shouldn't be, it's a weird thing to sequester a certain group of people and try to keep upping their lifespan and their lifestyle. So we have the gender Prius, we have the gender Minotaur. Now, I use that term. Nobody came into me and said, I'm a gender Minotaur. Um, But what they did come into me and say is, I'm one thing on the top and another thing on the bottom. And often that was to explain away their genitalia, okay? And most of the the kids who are gender Minotaurs love mermaids, so make sure you have a lot of mermaid books. My message to the, the, CEOs, the CEOs is, you know, at $74 million, you know, collectively earning that, you know, how many yachts can they need, you know, you know to, to, yacht, to, to water uh, ski behind it? You know, I mean, it's just crazy. Could not have said it better myself. Let's get to the first question. 
What was the worst demonic filth you were ah. just forced to ingest? And you'll be scrubbing off your brain later. Shannon is the guest and ladies first. That goes to you. Hey, fellas, how are you? I have to go with um, just the brazen attitude about what we have in store for us, what they have planned for humanity in the 21st century, the great resetters. The, what was that guy on Joe Rogan or something? I don't even know who that guy was. But... It's Louis C.K. He's a pretty well-known comedian. Oh, OK. I, probably should. I mean, the, well, I'm sure has is... a security following wherever he goes. By the way, oh, you guys, you guys ever tried to get on the Rogan show? You ever even tried to contact it? I yeah. have, man. It's Fort Frickin' Knox. I mean, really? I, I had I sat down for dinner back in June in Boise with Peter McCullough. Him and I just talked about everything we had seen together the last few years. Just, just, just yeah, the yeah. two of us. And he walked me through the process of getting even contacted by Rogan. And what I mean, they did everything but put a frickin' bag over his head. All right, so he doesn't wow. know where the damn studio is. Okay, and wow. and and they're and, and you're on that show telling the rest of us just to open the borders. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Anyway, right? go ahead, Shannon. My bad. Go ahead. Well, yeah, it's you know, and this is what is there. Je Jeffrey Tucker was on with me earlier this week, and he was talking about the difference between what we're experiencing right now versus socialism, communism, the fascism of the 20th century. I mean, it, in those movements, at least they, they want the the goal was for prosperity, general prosperity for the working man, right? They wanted a chicken in every pot. That was the the false vision, but that was the promise of. Um, all of the isms of the 20th century. Um, what we're dealing with right now is dark, it's dystopian, and they are telling us you will own nothing and you'll be happy. You will eat bugs, you'll live in a box, you won't drive a car, you can't have a gas stove. Your life is going to be miserable. Uh, an elite group of individuals are gonna run everything. It's gonna be a, a you know, screen slavery technocracy and we're gonna shove it down your throat and you're gonna like it. And that's the grand vision. It's it's unlike anything that we've seen in in human history, to my knowledge. I have never seen this type of of darkness. And to have this guy come on and be like, "Yeah, let's just overwhelm everything, and it's going to be terrible." And yeah, that's great. We that's what we want to have. The New York Times is gleefully predicting in like at the, by the end of the century there will be a ninety eight percent drop in population, and they are excited about that. Right. This is a death cult. We are dealing with crazy, psychotic, demonic death cult, megalomaniac freaks. And people need to wake up to this because it's it is not going to get better until until we stop this. Preach. Sorry. It's we crazy. could probably just end the show right there. It's crazy. I don't know what else, I don't know why. Other than we've got live reads. Why would we do another one hour and 52 minutes after that? But go ahead, Todd. Shannon is exactly right except <laughs> that it's even worse because right. i'm surprised that you two it's even worse. Well, but you you guys don't know who louis ck is so you don't have the context of why this is even worse during me too louis ck was canceled because it came out and literally that he had a track record literally that of he, he would he not came, only he would whip it out exposing it came himself out. Yeah, yeah. What? to other women but publicly masturbating in front of them oh. i forgot oh. about that that's the guy who's saying this see so now he's been restored and this has a lot to do with Corinne jean pierre they're the same person yep she was p just masturbating in front of you and so you're not going to do anything about it that uh, ebbs and flows border ebbs and flows and and the same media that allows louis ck to you know we'll cancel you yeah. when we want to we'll restore you when you want to as long as you're on your talking points you saw it That's right. with the media that allows kareen jean pierre to do that that's right they are it yes it the words trying to find the words Look at what Shannon said at the end. It's demonic. It's dark. It's still trying to get you to understand, which is why I'm trying to go even over the top rope of Shannon being absolutely right. right. They're just publicly masturbating in <laughs> front of you and your children, and they know you won't do anything. Right. That's right. But That's right. I am reliably assured by many of the top shows in my industry that if we put up again the guy they didn't want to vote for and, and his people for the last few elections and keep just exposing, just keep exposing the rot, just keep uh. exposing the gut, 
the, the rot gut, that this that 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 people will rally behind him and and uh, and take back America. That that's I'm reliably that's assured of this, Todd. You seem to be casting doubt upon the likelihood of that strategy. Now, Oren McIntyre just had a fantastic tweet. He retweeted the fact that it came out that the the two. Uh, young punks who who just in Vegas I think it was ran over that retired police chief on purpose they videotaped themselves doing it they killed the man in cold blood and upon their arrest they just said we're going to get a slap on the wrist for this thing and Arne McIntyre said like it in a country that was you know bad things always happen but in a country that was running the way it was supposed to we would know exactly what to do with this kind of thing but no one there's no consequences it's just that kind of thing happens daily grotesque thing you saw a couple, i pounded my fist a couple days ago about there should be a january 6 happen daily this is what i'm talking yeah. about oh yeah we should be enraged yeah. and meeting out justice swiftly it's because people don't know about the lawfare persecution yeah against a multi-billionaire yeah. with a minus 30 unfavorable who will have, be forced to, with a tether around his ankle, play golf at Mar-a-Lago for the rest of his natural days. They don't know this yet, Todd. And once they know this, hmm. they're going to care a lot more about yeah. him than yeah. they've cared about their own homes and their own schools and their own children for these last couple of decades. I'm reliably assured. Aaron. Yeah, I, I think if, if, you know, if, if the normies finally know that Donald Trump is facing, what, 91 uh, 91 counts of uh, various indictments. When the normies finally, finally are aware of that, they will wake up to the fact that there are also individuals out there trying to uh, promote two-year-old yeah. uh, gender minotaurs. Yes. It's the Louis C.K. thing for me. And I know Shannon and Todd have already hit on this. The level of self-loathing that's on display there that's then turned out that hatred for yourself that's then turned out on the that might be one of the most wicked things that I have ever heard. That guy is never not going to live in a gated community. That guy is never not going to have He's security. He's on the number around, one show in the freaking hemisphere. Him. That guy is never not going to live a posh life. But yes, things shouldn't be so great around here. How deep of self loathing do you have to have? It's just a portrait of what progressivism does to the soul. Preach. Mm. Now I kind of wonder, why are we doing the next one hour and 42 minutes? Aaron, can you check on the contract? Can I just do all the live reads in a, in a row and we'll just let's sign just, off? Let's just I mean, what, what is the point for, of speaking for the next one hour and 42 minutes? It's not going to get any more. Rather than ask it's for not going to be any more here. meaningful or prophetic than everything you guys just said here in the opening 10 minutes of this program. But nevertheless, we'll trudge along. Let's get to the exit question. On a scale of one to 10, with one being how likely Tim Scott ever shows us his beard, and 10 being how likely Lindsey Graham shows love to a man with a beard. Rank this week's level of total depravity, Todd. 10. Aaron. 10. Shannon. 10. Yep. Yeah, that, yep, one, yep. that, that one is pretty bad. I love when we get Shannon at a certain 10. There's no like weird five thing. She's just like, oh, that's terrible. It's <laughs> yeah, all 10. Yeah, yeah. You know, we've had a good no, day. I, I Shannon's at a 10. I, it's really probably yeah, a 20. It, it, yeah. I, Shannon's <laughs> like, I cannot even come up with a contrarian take to this one. No. <laughs> All right, Jace Medical folks, sponsors issue two on the show, and they came on board this show last year with the Jace case, and they saw what happened over the last couple of years with COVID when suddenly venerable medications who may or may not work or may or may not work at different stages of a COVID infection were suddenly, despite winning awards, suddenly despite saving hundreds of thousands of lives around the globe, were now instantly categorized as dangerous and they wanted to make sure that didn't happen to another batch of venerable medications and so they'd be available to you just in case of another <coughs> emergency well now they're going the next level they want to make sure your meds are available to you all right so get a 12-month backup supply as well as that jace case but now you can get a 12-month backup supply of your meds whether it's diabetes heart health blood pressure uh, cholesterol even mental health or more all right, you can take advantage of this right now. Get that peace of mind right now at jacemedical.com. Enter the code DACE at checkout for a discount. jacemedical.com, J-A-S-E, J-A-S-E, jacemedical.com. Use the last name of mine, DACE, for your checkout for the discount. jacemedical.com. All right, let's get to issue two, the return of abortion politics. 
Donald Trump drew the ire of most of the pro-life movement with these comments, calling heartbeat laws, quote, terrible and falling for the old canard of exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother. I, I want to get your response uh, to this new Alabama law. Porters say they're trying to bring a case to the Supreme Court that could overturn Roe versus Wade ultimately. Do you support the Alabama law? Do you think that this will lead to the overturning of Roe v. Wade? I don't support the Alabama law. Uh, I believe that there ought to be exceptions. Uh, I'm pro-life, but there ought to be exceptions for rape and incest <clears throat> and where the life of the mother is at risk. Whoops, wrong clip. Anyway, later on in the week on Truth Social, Trump effectively doubled down, telling Republicans they need to temper their language on abortion, saying, quote, I can state my position on abortion, but to other than that, leave the issue alone. When you say leave the issue alone, you'd, you would allow, you'd say freedom of choice? I, I w would allow people to have those opinions and respect those opinions. Sorry about all that. Anyway, carry on. I, I, Todd, I, I just, I have, I have done this show my entire career. Like nothing has changed, but maybe I'm wrong. Is this just has this just become a rehash of all the internal debates over baby killing we had on the right years ago? Um, or is Trump blazing some new trail here? Has he come up with an angle on abortion politics? Is this 4D chess or a rehash as Aaron depicted in his in his lead up to the topic? What say you? Here's what I think. You would have thought all of us would have thought it, what are the what are the things that if they happen politically look w w will be a sign of a culture victorious on some level 10 10 years ago let's just say 10 years ago if uh and i'm getting close this is just that would be just before my coming on the show but at that time even if we overturn roe is that a undeniable sign of a culture victorious, at least heading in the right direction? I, you you would think you so. You would think so. You but, would you would think so. But here we are, and that's because I think one of the truest things any founding father ever said was John Adams when he said, uh, "The Constitution is made for a moral and religious people, and no other." And yes, even a court ruling or legislation that would seem to be an unambiguous and even wholly good. Well, I, this is kind of like what happens. Does a tree make a sound in the forest when it falls, if no one's there to hear it? Like, we don't, we're not a moral and religious people. Who begins surrendering after a big win? Like, could you imagine Lincoln's Gettysburg Address after Gettysburg? Lincoln comes out with, Folks, we really need to begin to push back on ourselves. We, we, we actually need to retreat, um, and uh, the South will rise again. Uh, and uh, that, that Robert E. Lee is a tough character now, and he's going to come back even harder. So, you know, after this momentous win here at Gettysburg, yeah, we're going to just kind of retreat and fortify our own ranks and really just hope that we didn't piss the Confederacy off too much. Who does this? You, I'll, I'll tell you who does it. A movement with no principle at all. Who, what kind of people do it? People with no principle at all. People, a real movement and people with principle, when you get a win like smashing somebody's shibboleth in their face, you probably have to be, you have to be talked away from going too far, from being yeah. too, pre too premature in declaring victory. In this case... It's like, we're sorry we won. We're sorry yeah. we won. We're, we're, we're sorry we kept our promise to our people finally after 50 years. We finally went ahead and, and did this. That's, what are, are, they're never sorry. And they're never going to be sorry. How they responded? They responded to Roe v. Wade by making chemical telemed abortions more available than they've ever been before. They just went more savage. That's all they did. They didn't retreat at all. They attacked us in the States. They didn't retreat at all. We're just not, Aaron, we're just not a serious people, Aaron. We're just not. We're no, just not serious. No, we're not. Now, I will say there is some good news, but a lot of bad news here. But the good news is, is that we've gone from trying to break through the canard 
of, hey, I'm in, in favor of three exceptions, rape, incest, life of the mother, and break through the canard of vote GOP to, to get better justices. We're now saying, we're now forcing Republicans to debate, well, when should, you know, when should we ban abortions? That's actually a step in the right direction. However, we're trying to take, apparently, two steps back. Because what is 15 weeks, what, 97% of abortions, something like that? 97% mm -hmm. of babies killed uh, within 15 weeks. So, yeah, we're not as serious. And this is the same damn show. I've heard, I, this time of year, actually, actually next, it really next month, football season's over for high school football, or I'd go home after practice, sit down at the computer, make sure all my school is done, get on, play Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds, I've got the under cabinet radio, AM 1040 WHO, and I listen to Steve on WHO having the same show. The same show. Which is, um, we're just not, as you said, not, not serious. This, this movement, whatever it is, comes down to one thing. And this is what I would listen to in th those afternoons. Playing on the computer, listening to Steve Dace. The next, the, 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 the opponents, the enemy, is out to win generations. We're out to win elections. Yep. That's exactly what you heard from Donald Trump this week. We're not going to win the election. I don't care if we don't win another damn election. If we save some babies. Dan Bongino, hats off to him. He made this exact same point. Who the hell cares what the tax rate is? Who the hell cares if, there, if we get great tax cuts, if we're still kill, killing babies? What is this all about? The only qu answers to that question are bad. But we're just doing the same thing. We might have moved the ball down the field. Hell, we scored a touchdown with the overturn of Roe v. Wade. And now we're going to turtle? No. The game just began. That was the beginning of the game. That wasn't the end. We're not... You don't sit on the ball. You don't take the air out of the ball up seven points in the first quarter. That's... Uh, apparently, that's, that's not good for winning elections. It's 4D chess, man. It's 4D chess. Shannon. Well, to build on what Aaron was saying, we're, you know, I call it Groundhog Day political hell. And, um, you know, when I started my show 10 years ago, I'm like, well, you know, what's going on with this? It's the same old con ink grift, right? It's, it is lying to their constituency base. I mean, what have we, we've been talking about, you know, cutting taxes, immigration, closing the border, abortion, abolishing the Department Eliminate of Department Education. Of oh, you got to it before uh, me. Waste, uh, fraud, and abuse yeah. will be Trump's speech uh, next week. Waste, uh, fraud, and abuse. Yes. No. Not this is Groundhog Day political hell. It's the same recycled story over and over and over, and they serve it up warm for their audiences. And it's not just the the con ink talk con ink talkers. It's it's the you know conservative wing of the Republican Party. It's the Marjorie Taylor Greens and the Lauren Bobarts and all of the. I mean, these are not serious people. They don't think. They don't know what time it is. They don't. I mean, that we are we are in. I mean, we are in a war at this point. I mean, and I feel terribly for the American people and I feel, feel terribly for, for conservatives. A lot of people who watch, you know, this show and my show who still want to jump on this tr this ridiculous Trump train, the MAGA train. Um, things are just going to get worse for you. Nothing is going to get better. Uh, if we continue to lie to ourselves as conservatives, as Christians, I mean, the abortion thing, I've told my audience many times, um, you, you might as well open up a plan or a, 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 a crisis pregnancy center in your hometown. You'll save more babies that way than going to the March for Life and going, I mean, because it's all just a grift. It's a, it's a con. It's a grift. It's to make money. It's the same talking points over and over. Um, thankfully, I think enough Americans are waking up. I know it's not nearly a majority, but we don't need a majority. We need a small, righteously angry minority that is organized and connected across the country, and we can go up against these guys. But yeah, the majority of the country is, they're hypnotized, they are satiated. I don't, I mean, it's, its to, to watch this, it, it, it's, it's biblical in nature at, at how crazy these things are. But um, no, they want to kill the babies. They want to kill the humans. They're aborting full grown humans with the vaccines right now. Uh, it is a death cult. And, you know, until people figure that out, it's just going to get worse. We had a now Trump has not gotten a lot of endorsements of, of magnitude and order. He got an yeah. endorsement from a pro-life state legislator who won by, I think, like five or seven votes, who went to our governor 
and said, hey, your heartbeat bills aren't good enough, which, by the way, I agree with. I'm for them, but we could do better. And said, we need to do life at conception while we have the votes. We need to do it right now. She turned around and endorsed Trump the day after he said uh, the legislation that overturned Roe was terrible. And that that has happened. Same. That that is much of what has occurred throughout that I have witnessed throughout the course of my career. And it doesn't matter if the name is Mitt Romney. It doesn't matter if the name is John McCain. The clips that Aaron played in his intro there are exactly what Trump is saying right now. Yeah, there's I, no, I don't believe in any exceptions. None. OK, but. No Republican of, of, of mag, no Republican of any of any magnitude is running on no exceptions pro-life issues. No. And, not the, not, and, and the bill that, that Mitt Romney talked about, he even mischaracterized the Alabama bill. It had exceptions in it. He was wrong. He lied about that. That was a total straw man. Who's doing that now, by the way? Who's doing that now? What, what Romney was doing a few years ago. Who's doing that now? You know what I Trump think. is doing that yeah. now. Trump is doing that now. Who, imagine if Nick Saban comes out after beating Ole Miss this weekend and just routes him. But, hey, guys, it's the middle of the year, and if, if we play that hard again, we'll, we probably can't beat Georgia in the SEC championship game, so we need to pull back and not try as hard. What the hell is this? It's, I, it's beyond stupid. It, and Shannon's right. I can only come to the conclusion this stuff is just biblical because it makes no logical sense that this is just – a, a spiritual exposing yeah. that is taking place right now. Oh, and yeah. I'll give you the last oh, yeah. word. Godless on the right and godless on the left. Okay, all three of you were public school- schooled, so you might be able to help me with a math uh, equation here. What is godlessness times godlessness? You'll get more godlessness. Okay. Zero times zero is zero. Thank you. Yes. Exit question. Yeah. And we've only got two minutes to hash this out. Mm-hmm. Who is currently more pro-life? Trump or RFK Jr.? Both are against any federal ban on abortion which would permit over 90% of abortions to occur. Both are strongly uh, anti-unjust war, but RFK Jr. is clearly stronger on the other big killer in our culture right now, Uh, Big Pharma, the jab, and the aftermath of COVID. So if this is Trump's position, if Trump's position is, I'm okay if if over 90% of abortions are legal in America because we won't ban anything federally, then who's more pro-life, Trump or RFK Jr. at that point? That's right. So I, I, my math on this is, and this is the defense that I've heard from many in the trunk, like people trying to be serious in the aftermath of these comments. Mm-hmm. Okay, don't listen to his record or re- rhetoric. Look at his record. His record is very pro-life. So for that reason, I will give Donald Trump. I won't give him that because those are the same people that say we are not allowed to look at DeSantis's record. See. Karl <laughs> Rove sent in, said in the 47th row at his inauguration. Thank you. And Jeb Bush, Jeb Bush right, uh, right, tweeted right. something nice about him. So Ron DeSantis's record doesn't matter. See. Screw those people. Yeah. See. I'm giving them yeah. nothing. See. And they'll like it. See, that's where I'm going with that. Oh, OK. Let's look at his record. We'll just do record alone so long as you actually look at the, you know, the guy in Florida. Hey, I'm fine record. looking at records. It's, it's what I'm all about. But we're not allowed to look at records now, actually. Every interview I do is just about polls. No one ever actually talks about records. Shannon, quickly, go ahead. Um, you know, I the abortion issue is a tough one from our, for RFK, but he's, I mean, in terms of the vaccines, and again, we mentioned the abortion of full-grown humans and the death cult that we're in right now, I'm going to say RFK Jr. I also think he might change on this issue. I think if there's one person that could could um, hear a, a viable pro-life argument and and be confident enough to change his position, it would be RFK Jr. So I'm jury's out on that. I'm going to say RFK Jr. for right now. Todd? I think it's obvious it's RFK Jr., which is why a guy named Kennedy can't get any coverage about anything. He can't yeah. be allowed to speak. They want Trump yeah. to speak all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So we had one cycle of polling in New Hampshire. That showed Trump had a Hugo Chavez lead in the primary. He's going to lose the state by double digits. And 15% of Republicans refuse to vote for him at a general election. This Mm -hmm. is a state that is about the size of um, Israel. How are all three of those things simultaneously true in such a small sample size of a state? Because we're living in the mouth of madness. That's as good of an answer as any. More in a moment. Right back here on the Steve Day Show. 
powered by our friends over at Patriot Mobile for a decade now. They have been on the vanguard of creating uh, the parallel economy that America so desperately needs. And thankfully, they have done it with a product that all of us do need, a mobile phone. Uh, And so now you can make the switch to America's only American mobile phone company remaining. Uh, That includes, if you're a member, access to all three major networks. You can switch at any time uh, and have that be no additional cost to you. They have an outstanding customer service team. Uh, U.S.-based, what does that mean? Uh, It means you can understand them. That helps. Uh, and, and and, And the switching is easy. I know it'll seem like a hassle. We put it off for many years as well, but it, they made it really seamless. And then you kind of think, well, maybe they just did that for us because, you know, we endorsed them on the show. But I've heard from so many of you that had a similar seamless switching experience with uh, our friends over at Patriot Mobile as well. So make the switch today. Stop giving money directly to people who hate you. And if you're a veteran or first responder, let them know when you go to make that switch. They've got extra ways of saying thank you for your service if you do. For the rest of us, you can get a free activation with the offer code Steve. Free activation with the offer code Steve when you go to patriotmobile.com slash Steve. That's patriotmobile.com slash Steve. Or you can simply call them at 878 Patriot. Let's welcome back in Shannon Joy as we continue on with your weekly look at the week that was with issue three, the old. The median age of the U.S. House of Representatives is 58 years old. The median age of the U.S. Senate is 65 years old. Joe Biden is closing in on 81 years old. Donald Trump is 77 years old. The Senate Minority Leader is 81 years old. The Senate Majority Leader is 72 years old. If you add up the ages of the four powerful individuals I just mentioned, or in the case of Trump seeking power, well, those four people have lived 64 years longer than the United States has existed. Just a fun fact for a fun Friday. So. Aaron, I'm going to start with you because you're the non Gen Xer here. So you have, you have, you're not the generation directly waiting behind the boomers. Okay. You don't have, you, you can maybe see this more objectively than the three of us are maybe going to be capable of seeing it. Am I too hard on the boomers? Are they really just clinging to power in this culture for so long because of nothing other than increased life expectancy? Um, or, Or is it something else? I don't think you're too, I don't think you're too hard on them. And I'm sure there's a little bit of both, but this idea uh, that we talked about earlier of a generational curse, that seems to be what's, what's doing us in. And it really started with, with the boomers, obviously. And, you know, who were their parents? It was the greatest generation who went out and saved Western civilization. But for whatever reason, and I think we know the answers to that question, we had excess post-World War II. We had decadence. And each succeeding generation has sucked, starting with the boomers. We just have our own ways of sucking. And because of the life expectancy, but because of the Peter Pan syndrome that I think systematically and systemically has infected that generation where it's we can do whatever we want whenever we want i'm living my own life i'm living my own truth i'm living my own dream with no thought to the future like the actual future no thought to what my actions will do to impact what what does that sound like that sounds like decadence that sounds like peter pan and so the boomers are not the only one with problems here They're not the only ones, but they are generational problems with each succeeding generation. Definitely had their roots with the boomers. And, you know, there's redeeming qualities about each generation. And I will say that I don't I don't have any, but there's no uh, transcendent qualities about these generations now. Same question now to the other two Gen Xers on the panel. Shannon, what do you think? 
You know, I'm putting the finishing touches on uh, my first mini documentary. I went down to New Orleans uh, to interview the ex um, mistress of Lee Harvey Oswald in 1963. She knew him the summer before the assassination of JFK. And so I've been doing a lot of research on that time and era of 1963. We're coming up on the 60th anniversary of the assassination of, of JFK. And I think that that was a moment. I think it was a defining moment in our culture and in our country when uh, the entire nation realized that something was was very, very wrong. Um, this uh, now understanding that the CIA likely did have a, a role in the assassination of, of JFK and that there were um, shadow entities running things, um, I think changed the, the fabric of the country. And then you had the subsequent assassinations of, of Martin Luther King and then um, Bobby Kennedy. And it just set this country on a course of what will what has to ultimately be just complete destruction until we can rebuild. And so I think we're at the, you know, 60 years in the wilderness, so to speak. And I do think that the Gen X um, generation is going to be very, very important right now. What Gen X does right now is going to be critical because we are the only generation now that has enough life experience to go in and, and tackle the problems that we have today, really get rid of this, this culture, the, the boomer generation running things. Um, but we're also the generation that remembers what it was like uh, pre-tech. And so if we're going to fight for a world that is not just completely engulfed by the technocracy and these global problems that we're facing, you're going to necessarily need a generation. Now, I mean, Gen Xers, we are cynical, a little lazy, not too ambitious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know if we're going to be- We are the generation that created grunge. Oh, it's we almost as grunge, it, right? it's like, almost as if we the minute we hit adulthood, we looked at what the generation ahead of us had already done with all of the various isms they let out of the Pandora's box right. and gave up and right. just grabbed the flannel shirts and the and the coffee yeah. and and just played yeah. black hole sun. And, yeah. uh, you know, and just and just you know, we're, we're done here. We got no shot here. And and yeah. we're, we're we're never going to be able to correct this and have largely right. just rolled right. over, frankly. Until now, the, what I noticed that the majority of the people who got it in 2020 and were, were early adapters, and we do have, have actually have a couple boomers that are really important to the movement, but this is a, a movement of, you know, people our age. It is a, they, they tend to very easily pick up on, yeah, it's all corrupt, they're all corrupt, they're all fake, the uniparty, the the grift. Um, the, the boomers are much more open to that. You know, I, I bet if you were to look at demographics of supporters of people like Ron DeSantis and Bobby Kennedy Jr., you would see, um, um, probably a, a, a larger number of the the Gen X population than the boomer yeah, population. Yeah, people who now. still have kids. Speculation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People yeah. people are making 20, 30 year decisions, and I've got one last chance of, to yeah. correct my generation's mistakes we've been making since the summer of yeah. love, and this is it. And it has yeah. to be with someone who made all the same mistakes as me and looks just as old. Todd. Yeah. Well, it's perfect timing that we're talking about this as New York decides it probably wants to take down statues of George Washington because right. that founding father, uh, probably more than anything else, what he left an imprint on this nation was for a very long time was the importance of laying down power. And that just by default, the example, not a law, the example sustained itself all the way to this guy named FDR, who, while did incredibly important things uh, regarding Western civilization in World War II, happens to be the president that all the boomers look to, and he's the guy who just refused to lay down power. And then out of that generation comes Social Security and Medicare. We're the generation that is supposed to ultimately set things down and then look back at the generations behind it and act as a sign of wisdom and give mm. its lessons no it no 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 it's mine 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 they're yeah. selfish and it, we can't upset them on social security or medicare they vote yeah look at what we believed for a long time mm -hmm. they are a selfish selfish generation and send me all your emails now don't send or deceive <laughs> i said it i don't care we've got problems too and now we're all selfish because of you yeah it's learned behavior yes oh my word yeah I, I think of who Amen. are some of the top i won't let's not name them Let's just keep it in the church for a second. Think of who some of the top boomer era pastors are that are still in pulpits. Pe men who, to their credit, finish are, are finishing the race. They're still on the narrow road. They, they never departed. They stayed 
they stayed tethered to the gospel and faithful in the pulpit to the end, right? Men in their 70s and 80s who are preaching right now. Think of, think of those, we, can, we wouldn't have to name them. You can think of who some of them are right now. Do you know who's going to succeed, who the 55-year-old man or 45-year-old man in, their, in that church who's going to succeed him is? Do you know? If you have a church like that, where you've had a faithful boomer generation pastor who's been there decade after decade after decade. Do you know who's succeeding him in your church? If it's a business you've worked for, do you know who this, what the succession line is? Do you see where I'm going with this? Do we know? I, I, I'm not, I am not confident we will do much better just because we haven't been prepared to do any better at all. We haven't even been prepared at all. In many of the cultural institutions, there is no line of succession at all. It's just the idea that I'm a best-selling boomer pastor. I'll just die in the pulpit. You all will just, the elders will figure it out when I'm, when God calls me home. This is my business. I'll never retire. I'll never groom anybody and I'll just do this forever. And we'll fit. You'll have to figure it out when I'm gone. I, do you know, I, in many places in our culture, and I don't know that this has ever happened before in American history, you can't point to obvious lines of succession. You can't look at the democratic party. Yeah. Who's the, what's the obvious line of succession there? You got one guy, the California governor. Okay. He gets hit by a bus tomorrow. Who are the next three names? Do you know? No. John Fetterman. No. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> At least in the Republican Party, you've got people that could be in line of succession if Trump gets hit by a bus. They have no line of succession. And they're the progressives. They're the ones that hey, were turning to the new generation all the time. They can't move on at all. This is a generational issue. Yeah. Exit question. Will we ever see... And I mean ever see a Gen X president. Oh, you mean, do we just skip it? Mm -hmm. Or the country just doesn't survive long enough to see one. There's a couple ways of answering that question. Fascinating. Mm. Let's get, Uh, let's get funky. No, it's a value bet. So yeah, no. Shannon, what say you? Uh, If the country's still here, I say yes. Okay. I say yes. Mm Mm-hmm. Let's get to our kicker topic. Issue four, pick John Fetterman's next wardrobe. He's perfect just the way he is. And tell us why. I, can I, I, I'm not, I know this is the kicker question, t- kicker topic. I don't care what his motivations are for dress, dressing like a slob. I hope he keeps doing it. I hope he keeps dressing It is the way. perfect. It, it is so perfect. It is let the bald ego let, symbol of Let me era. take this. I want to take this. You're on. I've, you're been, on. I've been keying this up all week or ever since I saw this. <laughs> He is perfect for the Senate. You've got all these senators with their nice buttoned up suits looking at this. We have standards here, don't you know? <sighs> no, you don't. No. no, you don't. You're a bunch of jokes. And he's exposing you. Regardless of your motivations, he's exposing you for the jokes you are. You can't even get him to change his clothes. You are less ineffective, or you are, you are, you are uh, as ineffective or even more ineffective than a walking VAERS report who can't string together two sentences. So don't <laughs> change, John Fetterman. Don't change. I love, I love that take. I love it, too. I love it, too. I love it, too. But the woman, at least on the panel, and yes, we are going to gender stereotype because she also clearly has some sense of style. The mm. woman on this panel has to have an answer to this question on, on, on style substance. OK, this is what I need to see. I need to see uh, Fetterman doing the whole bathrobe and bunny slipper kind of thing. Like, just let's even just go down go even further. In. Let's go all in. Like Get the full bathroom. Hugh Hefner just shows up like at the Senate, like the full Hugh Hefner. He's Bad even head. got the porn stash. Why not? He's working on the porn stash. Let's just go with it. Right. Bad head, you know. Why even brush his teeth? I oh, love that. <laughs> just comes out of the hotel, jumps in the shower, grabs the hotel robe and slippers. And just goes down the street to the Capitol and shows up to work like that. I freaking right. love that, That's Todd. Right. I love it. Nude from the waist down <laughs> with a T-shirt, white T-shirt, uh, oh. and uh, written in crayon, do you like my vagina? <laughs> oh, my. I think that hits all the buttons. I can't unsee that. Thanks a lot, Todd. <laughs> Who's going to protest He's- that? See this headline from the Babylon Bee. Senate relaxes rules to allow Fetterman to take baths in the reflecting pool. (laughs) Oh, gosh. (sighs) 
and, and they'll ask Jean Pierre about it, and she'll just say, "Ebbs and flows, man. Ebbs and flows." <laughs> we so deserve this. We deserve all. We. <laughs> he is the country. bald. He, he is the bald yeah. eagle. He is the symbol of the country. He is. He is. Oh, I, I don't have gosh. a cogent thought. I, I couldn't possibly think for myself. I'm vac- probably vaccine injured, and okay. I'm and yeah, I you know I've just given up. It, 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 it's a general rule. I've just given up on life, and, and have no standards for myself whatsoever. He is the perfect symbol for the country. Perfect. Let's get to our predictions, Todd. Which is my, my, but just yesterday or the day before, he was talking about he was weeping, I guess, and talking about how oh, he's God. being bullied. Honestly, if if DeSantis is out there will be very real con not to santas biden if biden is out the, at one of the logical tactical picks that the democrats would have to consider in its top three to run for president of the united states would be john fetterman it's not a, i'm not being remotely unserious about that i i, I don't know because why you of what be. you just said yeah it, it, everybody thinks with the motion him against trump Honestly, he'd win. And just look, make Trump look like a villain because he's up there berating this poor oh. disabled man. And they don't care. See, we told you in 2016 he made fun of somebody's they disability with that act, remember? He's just doing it doing it for the entire campaign now. Biden's not president now, which is why he was perfect. That's why we picked yeah. him. We didn't get it another time. They will do it again, and they'll laugh at us because, like I said at the beginning, they're just masturbating in front of us and enjoying it. Yep. All right, very quickly, Aaron, predictions go. Despite all the talk about this weekend of college football being one of the best on uh, on. On the slate for this entire season, there will be no major upsets tomorrow. Also, second prediction, this is more serious. The Iowa caucus will be one of the lowest turnout Iowa caucuses on record. The New Hampshire primary will be one of the highest turnout New Hampshire primaries on record. I could see both of those things being true. Shannon, quickly go, please. Um, This latest round of COVID-19 boosters uptake under 5% of American population. could absolutely see that. Yeah, I could see both of those things happen that you guys just predicted. Proving same old Lions is as constant as the North Star. The Detroit Lions will lose to the Atlanta Falcons on Sunday, lose both of their first two home games to completely nullify that momentous road win opening week against the defending Super Bowl champions because that's just how the House of Usher Rolls. It's about damn time you're back. Mm-hmm. I, we, we all had enough of whatever that nonsense Pollyanna. Steve Dace. This time it's different. I don't know what it was. You guys are going to be unmuting me on Twitter right after this. Good grief. He's back, baby. Shannon, good to see you as always. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. All right. You too, boys. Thank you. Man, these. At least we ended th- this, this, this Dace group brought the heat. The feedback, man, hopefully uh, hopefully keeps this tempo going when we come back here for hour two. It's up to the audience, right? It's up to the audience. We'll find out in a moment. All right, back here on the Steve Day Show. It's hour two here on Blaze TV radio and podcast alongside Todd and Aaron. Let us know what you think about what we think via the SteveDace.com inbox by emailing the show, Steve at SteveDace.com, D-E-A-C-E. Like us on Facebook, me, we, and Gab. Follow me at Steve Dace Show on Twitter, Getter, Instagram, and TikTok. Follow me as well on Truth Social at Real Steve Dace there. And if you are a podcast listener, if you wouldn't mind, please leave us a five-star review if you like the show. Thank you to the thousands that have done that for us already. And also remember to hit subscribe, or if you're on iTunes, hit follow so that every new episode we do shows up in your feed right away. Thanks to uh, those of you that did that for us too. This part of the show, Feedback Friday, brought to you by My Patriot Supply. If you get the feeling something unthinkable could go down because we've had a few moments in recent years, well, that could never happen here, and it happened here. Make sure this time you're ready with our friends over at My Patriot Supply. Get their three-month emergency food kit. That's breakfast, lunch, dinner, even drinks and snacks. The full complement of the 2,000-plus calories that you need each and every day. 16 different types of meals and side combinations, by the way. So plenty of variety. Stays good for up to 25 years with proper storage. Free shipping gets thrown in as well. If you get this at preparewithdace.com. Preparewithdace.com is where you want to go. Fast, free shipping preparewithdace.com again you want to head over to preparewithdace.com and when you do 
You'll get 25% off. You can't beat it for that peace of mind for you and your family. Preparewithdace.com. All right, you guys ready for some Feedback Friday? Let's you bet. commence. All right. Um, Bobby writes, I'm a millennial working in the avi- aviation industry. And this industry is majority boomers. And now that they're being forced to retire, the entire industry is shorthanded. Honestly, it means I'm going to be worth more. However, that knowledge is going to die with them. As a generation, they really just refuse to teach younger guys because their mindset was, if I teach them, I'm going to be replaced. So this entire industry is getting screwed. Thoughts? I I think about this all the time in terms of not just the airline industry, but the what you know plumbers electricians and things uh like that you know the stuff that the mechanics that make an advanced first world civilization go like Mm -hmm. how it a priority has not it's been all kinds of you know political power plays or uh, all manner of selfishness none of it has been to actually make sure that it's sustainable and healthy for the long term no, it's to make sure you're sustainable and healthy okay. for as long as your term is yeah it's a very me focus but that's what that's what generationally the summer of love we 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 are the generation you've been waiting for we actually understand gender roles we we really know what what women want that other generations did not um we understand um every ideology every ism the idea that i mean they basically broke america they, they broke Western civilization yeah. is essentially what happened. And to their credit, they have been trying to put it back over the last couple of decades. But the problem is putting it back without the foundation that was laid to give birth to those things is just yeah. simply not going to work. And so why does Donald Trump sound like Mitt Romney on abortion, who sounded like John McCain on abortion? Why? Uh, those men are all dramatically different men, right? Dramatically different men. John McCain, war hero. Mitt Romney, family man. Donald Trump, playboy celebrity. Th- these, these three men are dramatically different men. At many times, at, at different times in their careers, they detested one another. And Trump has detested the other two at different times in his career as they detested him. They, they don't really have much in common on a, on a human level. Except one thing. Do you know why on abortion, the fundamental moral issue of the era, of that generation, do you know why Trump sounded like Mitt Romney and Mitt Romney sounded like John McCain and and what, Aaron, you played in your intro there on the day screw? Because while the names are variables, while the candidates are variables, while the campaigns are variables, who's the constant? The generation of voters they're talking to. That's the constant. That's why. The people are the problem. The people are the problem. Yeah. And in a self-governing republic, the people are always the problem or the solution. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's really a manifestation of what government by the consent of the governed means. That, that, sort, of, that sort of moral mixed up message Oh, so I, you know, I can continue to act out immorally and, 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 and not have any standards at all or anything put on me, but I can still fix all the immorality that my generation gave birth to in the culture at the exact same time. That, that's just not how this thing works. And that's how they've tried to make it work. And it doesn't work that way. And that's why, so that's why on the fundamental moral issue of the boomer political era, killing babies, this is why Trump... Sounds the same as Romney now, and sounds the, who sounded the same as McCain, even though they're dramatically different men. They ran in different decades. Consider John McCain ran for president two decades ago. We're in the 2020s now. So we're in the middle of the 2020s. We had all the 2010s. He ran in 2008. That was two other decades ago. Mitt Romney ran for president more than a decade ago. And, and they talk the same. Like, nothing's changed. on. Has it, it's been any, like, major changes in the abortion issue since 2008 and 2012 you can think of, Todd? Anything come to mind that might have reset the issue or changed the polarity of the debate or the trajectory of, 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 of the conversation? Has there anything happened between 2012 and now that would make you think the same exact talking points and the same MO is, is exactly what is needed in this moment as what Mitt Romney was saying in 2012? 
Anything changed? Can you come up with anything? And the irony of it, something, everything changed. Everything changed. And here's the irony of it. The most boomer, peak boomer thing of them all. Everything changed. And the guy that changed it is going right back to where we were before he did. That's the most boomer thing of them all. Everything on the issue has changed. And the guy who changed it, Trump, is going right back to as if he never changed it at all. And we're going to have the same exact conversations we had before everything changed. That is boomer AF, man. Boomer AF. That's what it is. Who, Mitch McConnell glitches out tomorrow. Who's Senate Majority Leader? Hmm. Somebody old. And the answer is, it doesn't matter, as The Rock once famously said. It doesn't matter. It'd just be a, it'd just be a, a robot. John Cornyn. It wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter. And we've done this in the church. Ask yourself, think of, without mentioning any names, because these men deserve better, because they've been faithful, and they've stood in the gap before you and I knew what a gap was. So I'm not going to call them out. But if you are, you know who I'm talking about. If you're a Christian, you know them because they've earned your respect. Ask yourself, who's the 45, 50-year-old man in that congregation that you know is taking over the next day, and you're confident he's got this? And most of you won't be able to do it. Meanwhile, you see, you see Paul pa- planting churches, passing on heritages, legacies constantly. In fact, we even have two letters in the Bible. Two books of the Bible are named 1st and 2nd Timothy. Why are those letters important? Whom was Timothy? Who was he? He was the one that Paul very publicly groomed to be a part of the leaders who would take his place. Considered him his own spiritual son. Even if, even if as a generation, the boomers suddenly had an epiphany and figured this whole thing out, we're in such a deep well right now that we wouldn't be able to fix the rot we're in and the hole we're in, dig out of the hole we're in, in the time they have left. We'd still be, see what I'm saying? We'd yeah. still be in the same situation. Even if they were like, dude, we got to, you know what? Grandpa and grandma were right. We got to go back to first things and we got to do it right now, right now. Great. The problem is you're out of time and you didn't prepare another generation to take your place. So any progress we would make now with you, we'd probably just lose later on anyway. That's the situation we're in. Linda Maddox writes, a lot of your listeners support Trump because he is addressing the real problem of lawlessness and corruption of many in the government. That and the overspending on what is destroying the republic. In my mind, most other issues take a back seat and will not be solved until the criminals in the government are removed from power, hopefully to prison. I largely agree with your last point there, that 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 is a basic step to fixing our problem, Linda. Now, I, I think, though, you're, you are deducing the symptom. I'm interested in the cause, the disease. A people that are not holy and not righteous and don't fear God are not going to be upholders of any form of civil or criminal law either. They're going to try to manipulate it in their favor. We're right back to the people and the problem. Yes. Yeah. So where I disagree is that that is the central problem. It's a manifestation of the central problem. The central problem is we've turned our backs on God. We only know what is right and moral because God has revealed it. We would not know this in and of ourselves. This is, to your point, elites have always done this throughout human history. Yes. It's, it, the tragedy is it's worse now, because, but the, the, the people oftentimes just simply didn't have the agency, the means. The, we, the people, 
are the boss. See, nefarious, and, nefarious points this out yes. in the book, a nefarious plot that what changed how, how, how they took down America is what you just said. They've always been able to corrupt the elites in almost every yes. single society and almost every single one. Yes. What mattered, what they did differently here is they realized that would not be good enough because the average everyday person has a local school, has a, has maybe their own, a, a business in their own home, a local church. All right. Has, has devices at, at their disposal, institutions at their disposal, that even if things got mag, got ultra corrupt up here, it couldn't filter down to the people because of the system that our founders installed for that not to mm-hmm. happen. So they realized, Nefarious said, we realized we had to corrupt the people at the individual molecular level. So they would then go and corrupt those institutions for us. And that's what happened in this generation. That's what happened. Yeah. So there's, there's, there's two things happen at every school board meeting in America. The people who know better never show up. And the people who are trying to end your way of life are always there. And usually the ones sitting up on the, on the dais. That, that's a perfect example yeah. of what we're talking about. So, so the last generation corrupted those very institutions, either directly in, in doing the Antonio Gramsci march through the institutions mm-hmm. with the intent of weaponizing them or indirectly. And then they just didn't care and didn't pay any attention. Mm-hmm. So, so what the letter writer is calling for is a time of old. The people will get fed up and rise up. No, the people, you, you think that they're, st- they're stamping this. They're endorsing this. And to the, de- to the degree that they grumble at all, they never use the, the power they have. They're too comfortable to do it. They're worried about the name they might be called. Those, those uh, we talk about these. We just got done talking about it on this very show, the olds. But again, Steve closed by saying the people are the problem. They're there because we let it happen and we don't want to be bothered. I would also say, Linda, Trump did not do what you wanted him to do. And that's why he's not in office. He didn't lock her up. He didn't drain the swamp. Nobody went to prison for trying to weaponize government against him. Nobody went to prison for trying to weaponize government against Brett Kavanaugh. Nobody paid for anything. And on top of that, when the, very, when, when, when the very lawlessness and corruption, Linda, that you want punished in government, when it, when, it, when it unanimously invaded our way of life on March 16th, 2020, Trump responded by shutting the government down, giving them the greatest wealth transfer of all time. 10,000 small family businesses were permanently erased while Walmart and every big box store stayed open. The, the largest wealth redistribution scheme in the history of the country. Let them print a $1,400 check to you so that they could then go pay yeah. get billions and trillions to their, to their, to their uh, people instead and called it the CARES Act, handed $400 million to the people that were going to then steal the election from him in about six months later. He didn't do what you wanted to do. Your instincts are correct. He did not fulfill your instincts. He just didn't do it. And that's why we're here today. He failed the biggest test of them all. He handed Big Pharma a a blank check to poison you and is not repentant for it. The guy in Florida took the most popular corporation in American history, maybe, punched them in the throat. And he's not repentant for that either because he did that for you. So one guy gave Big Pharma extra liability protection, billions of dollars to poison you, has no regret, no remorse. The other guy in Florida punched the most venerable corporation in American history, right in the throat and shows no remorse for that either. But that was for you. Trump did these things to you. And you're just, there are no arguments you could make because one does not exist that would convince me that he has no accountability for this. If you have an art, there is a strong argument for Trump, but you essentially have to, you have to make that argument by saying his presidency ended on March 16, 2020. And what happened to him was not fair. And that's a, that, that probably has a, a good ring of truth to it to some degree. But everything that you wanted Trump to do, he didn't do. And he ultimately assumed the position for the very forces that you want exposed and criminalized. He assumed the position and gave them more money and more power via COVID than they had ever had before in American history. And that is a fact. And I won't get rich telling anybody that. But it's true. 
So I'm going to say it anyway, and I'm going to sleep really well tonight after I do. May not just be in as much of a nice, as a nice of his bed or as big of a house as the rest of the people that won't tell you these things. But my conscience is clear. Should we lighten it up a little bit? Maybe. There's a shot of that? There is. Okay. All right. James has a, que- has a selection of questions for us. All right? Okay. Favorite music artist and your, the, your fav- the favorite song of theirs? Good grief. That's tough. I'll go first. There's a few that I could go with, but I'm going to go with the Beatles, and I'm going to say Let It Be. But I could have gone with Led Zeppelin and said Cashmere. I could have done that for sure. Could have gone with a few others. All right. But I'm going to go with the Beatles and let it be. Anybody else want in on this question? Or are we moving on? Um, Year of the Cat. Yeah, maybe. I I used to, when I was younger, I, I was a huge Coldplay fan, but man, they've gone off the rails. And as I've gotten older, I've noticed that their discography seems to be devoid of testosterone. So I actually, there's one album that I keep coming back to, and it's Fleetwood Mac. Is it the Dreams album? Yeah, Dreams. Yeah, or Rumors. That's their best-selling album ever. Yeah, um... Ru- I actually know it is rumors. So give me anything on that album, basically. Um, Fleetwood Mac, you really can't go wrong. Okay. Um, I think a little off the beaten path, at least in terms of the song. Uh, U2, Red Hill Mining Town from the Joshua Tree. U2 could have been on my list too. That would not have been the song I would have picked, but that's not, that's not terrible. All right, favorite food. I'll go first again. Warm, gooey, just out of the oven, chocolate chip cookies. Taco salad for me. A good taco salad with plenty of ground beef. That's a good call. Somebody, no one's, steak. That's a good call. It's America, man. Come on. Okay. Somebody's got to represent. But but I have a palate of a 12-year-old. Uh, absolute favorite place to visit and vacation. Well, prior to the last couple of years, I would have said Disney. I loved it as a kid. Loved taking my kids there. Have nothing but good memories there. Um, so I would have said that until the last couple of years for sure. Um, so I'll just say Disney prior to 2021 was, was my answer. I'm not sure I have an answer to replace it at the moment. I've been to Universal multiple times and it's, it's fun, but I, I still have to say, I like Universal too. It's the Grand Canyon and it's not so much, I mean, it's the entire trip. Driving to the Grand Canyon, you're in the car for hours and hours and hours, and you know, and you see that you just watch the landscape go from lush green of of Iowa in the Midwest to brown of Western Kansas to uh, really brown of Texas, and then you start to get red in in New Mexico, and you see mountains, and and then the payoff once you get there, you just can't beat the Grand mm-hmm. Canyon. And then it's the drive back, except for Nebraska. The drive back is, is just as much as the fun as the as fun as the drive there. Driving back through the the Rocky Mountains on the, what is it? I I can't remember the the interstate. That's to me, it's the journey of going to and from the Grand Canyon and the payoff of getting there. Okay, Todd. Uh, best family trip we ever took was uh, to uh, South Dakota, uh, the Badlands, so, you know the the monuments, uh, all that stuff, and 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 camping. It was, you know, had that young family, all four girls, and but they all are old enough. I think they'll they'll all have memories of the kind of thing that they'll you know the seeds that they'll want to plant in their own families. Yeah. Good. Favorite sport team: Michigan, Iowa, Wisconsin. Right? We good there? Yeah. Sure. Are you gonna what? Go, anybody get a pro team? You go to Chiefs or Packers instead? <laughs> I was. I, I can take it or leave it. I mean, okay. I was a Chiefs fan before I was a Hawkeyes fan. Okay, so Chiefs for you. Okay. If you weren't doing what you do now, what would you be doing professionally? I'd be in sports broadcasting. That's what I was doing before this. So that's what I'd be doing. Todd? Oof. What would I be doing uh, now? I don't. I, I, I think something totally different, like, like some 
some something where something is actually made you know some sort of cons I, not because i can build anything but something in manufacturing or construction or something like that at this point in my life i wouldn't even have said that five years ago uh my midlife crisis backup plan is driving an 18 wheeler hmm. okay that's not terrible um do you drink and if so favorite cocktail uh i every now and then only socially for me i love martinis um I'm a, I love, I've always loved orange juice, so I like fuzzy navels. And because I hung out, I partied with the chicks in college, I learned to like chick drinks like, you know, pina coladas and margaritas. But typically, if I get something to drink that's, at a restaurant, it's going to be a martini. because you hung out with chicks. It's the same thing as the chocolate yeah. cookies. <laughs> it's just they're nice and sweet. Yes. That's probably part of it, too. Todd? I often don't uh, I drink cocktails, and I drink plenty of beer and uh, red wine. Okay. Aaron? Uh, probably Long Island iced tea when we're out at a, at a restaurant. One wish, Aaron, what would it be? Uh, that my family grows up and uh, has a good childhood and uh, loves their Lord. That's all. I think I'm going to second that. That uh, my children's number one priority is never comfort. That's a good one, too. Number nine, did we go to the moon? I don't want Buzz Aldrin kicking my ass, so I'm going to say hell yeah. Todd? Yes. Aaron? Sure. Uh, are women truly nuts, or is are they God's way of testing us for something bigger? We're all truly nuts, because we're all sinners. Did you, there was this, a, wo a woman... And these questions are from James, by the way. A, a woman posted this. Who? Oh, Tracy Beans, who we just had on the show this week. If you you can find it on her Twitter feed, but she and it looks kind of old. I don't know if it was made to look a little old, but it's this dude who looks like he works for NASA and he does the chart of crazy versus hot. <laughs> and on the, and hot goes from zero to ten on the bottom axis, but on crazy, the he said the we it doesn't go down to zero because the lowest you get with women is a four. So he starts at a four, but he does this thing totally deadpan, like he's doing doing something scientific. It's um, it's, it's funny, and I think it's ultimately done as an ode to women as much as anything else. And how much, despite all running this gamut, how badly men need them. I had a friend in college in my pagan days, and he used to say two things. He used to say, "Romance without finance is a damned nuisance." He used to say that. I've quoted that many times. But then he also used to say. I don't care who she is, and no matter how hot she is, somewhere there's a guy that's sick of her bleep. <laughs> well, that one definitely cuts both ways, though. Yes, it yeah. does. Absolutely, that cuts both ways. That's why I answered James. Yeah. We're all nuts. Yeah. We're all crazy. Our, brain, our, our brains are broken. We're, we're sinners. So, um, I just received this note. Just, just further proof. Nothing's changed. I mean, I used to get these responses from McCain and Romney supporters in droves. Getting pretty sick and tired of the unending Trump bashing. A couple of months ago, you said identity politics would never be something you'd be a part of. We haven't stopped doing that, just as far as I can tell. Knock it off. It's beneath you. Did she point out anything I've said yeah. that's not true? That's what's always fun about this, all that there's never details. There's never ever. any detail. Nobody ever says anything never, that I said that wasn't factually accurate. It's just stop saying it. I've done this before. This is just like... <sighs> Nothing's changed. Nothing has changed. Nothing has. You'll never get me to stop saying something on the basis that it offends you or too many of you. If anything, I'll just do more of it on, out of spite. You, you need to exp explain to me if what I'm saying is not true. If what I am saying is not true, well then, in that case, I'll stop saying it. But approaching me from any angle other than is it true just will never work it doesn't matter what your title is doesn't matter where you work doesn't matter if we work together doesn't matter if i work for you doesn't matter if you listen here and really if you're a listener i do work for you you guys decide whether i continue to do this or not more than anybody else does that just doesn't work on me not it just doesn't all i really care about is if it's true if it's not true then you tell me if it is, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. I've got a bunch of my old archive shows from back in the day, Aaron. Yeah. We should just go grab some. Do we, can you even play CDs and DVDs anymore? 
<laughs> Can you just do that? realized I don't have a CD player. Because I've got a bunch of them on CD. Just go grab a bunch of those shows and just start cutting up clips of how I responded to this stuff. And I won't even talk on the show. I'll just have you hit a, you know, just hit a, a quick link, a quick key. You know, I'll be just sitting here, you know, texting, tweeting, checking out the latest lines on the football games this weekend. It'll sound like it's me doing the show, but it's really just a clip of the show that I did 15 years ago when we ran McCain and Romney. Just getting all the same feedback from all the same kinds of people. None of it fact-based, none of it, none of it truth-based, just all emotion-based. Nothing's changed. You know why nothing's changed? Because the people haven't changed. That's why. And the denial gets worse and worse. Trump, your guy, the guy who said, I don't like people, and people rallied to it. I don't like people who get captured. And he got captured on COVID. Yep. He got captured on January 6th. Now he's captured on Roe. It's funny. Okay. Then that, that ultimately is why I didn't go to work for him, is because of that day. Yeah. And then he ended up now, now, you know, eight years later, just sounds exactly like John McCain on abortion. Nothing's changed. There's, I just thought of a statement. Tell me if you think it has a good ring, to, a ring of truth to it. It's like there's nothing new under the sun. Mm. Thoughts? Uh, we should, yeah. should we, we should let, shout let, that around. Let, pull let, it. Let, pull let's let, let's it. ruminate on that for a second. There's nothing new under the sun. The more I think about it, I can't believe no one's trotted that out before, Aaron. Yeah. Tell me, tell me if this sounds familiar. In election. Everybody, all the pundits, all the polls have it going one way. But it goes the opposite. To everybody's shock. Hmm. And the people in the media... The people and the punditry and the politicians, some of the politicians, the next day after that election, have a little bit of self-awareness, but then the next two or three days go back to saying, hey, should we, should we examine ourselves? Should we look at ourselves in the mirror? And then they decide, no, the people are the problem. Does that sound familiar? <sighs> yeah, I know that's, uh, I'm talking about the 2022 election where we all thought it was going to be a red wedding. There was a chance for some self-awareness, some self-reflection. But no, pro-lifers cost us the election. Yeah, nothing, nothing new under the sun. I think that's maybe what puts me at odds with some of you and some of my own colleagues is I was actually willing to look at those results and have some self-awareness and take them seriously. And I think a lot of people want to act like that election just never happened. And... Unfortunately, I can't. All right, back here on the Steve Day Show, powered by our friends over at Relief Factor. If you are struggling with chronic pain, and that often shows up in your body, manifests as symptoms like lingering soreness, achiness, stiffness, etc., that's from usually too much inflammation in the body, particularly in your joints. And... That's why you're looking for Relief Factor. It is 100% drug-free, even though it was created by physicians who can prescribe drugs. Because if there's a way to do it without needing drugs, take advantage of it. Because sometimes uh, that can create and tax problems and tax other organs and functions and systems in the body. Sometimes there's a trade-off there, right? So if there's a natural way to do it, take advantage of it. We think Relief Factor is. Now, it's not going to be for everybody, but there's about a 70% chance that it'll be for you because that's the percentage of people who stick around long term after trying the three week quick start. They see such good results in those three weeks that they make it a part of their long term health regimen. Just 20 bucks to find out if that person is you. If, if that's the 70% that uh, you could uh, be looking for the solution and finding the solution that you have long been, been searching for, just go to relieffactor.com. That's relieffactor.com. Or you can call them at 800, the number four relief, 800 for relief, or go to relieffactor.com. Nancy says, I have served on the elder nominating committee for the past few years at my church. It's an evangelical free denomination. Listening to you guys for the past three years, my eyes have been open to a realization that some of the interview questions may ne maybe need to be a little bit more uncomfortable. We have used the same questions every year I have served. 
what three questions would you ask at these interviews? I would like each of us to come up with a question, and that's how we'll do the three. We're going to assume, since it's an evangelical free church, that biblical fidelity is already an automatic in the questions they're asking. Okay? Let's assume that. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. All right. So let, let's assume that they're already vetting for basic biblical orthodoxy. And so we don't need to go there. Each of us then come up with another question. Who wants to start? A point of clarification yeah. from a Catholic perspective, yeah. because this is, a, this is a different. How much power slash authority slash influence does, it, does or should a committee like this have? Because... That's a totally different question. That's a, that is a phenomenal question, actually, and it can it varies widely within Protestantism. You have pa- pastoral led churches, you have uh, congregation led churches, you have denomination led churches, and so it, it really varies on in terms of the denomination. So I would guess, since she's on an elder nominating committee, though, um, that her committee has a huge say on whether somebody becomes an elder or not. And for those of you that don't know, and that's okay if you don't, you know, what's the difference in a deacon and an elder, an elder, I should say, a deacon serves the physical needs of the church and an elder serves the spiritual needs of the church. Okay. So, so you can answer, I don't but know. With a degree of authority or just advisory? With a de- well, that can also depend on the they church. Can, okay. All right, let, let's assume with a degree of authority. Okay. All right. That may or may not be on par with the pastor himself, but has some level of authority to it, either to hold the pastor accountable or to help guide the pastor in the spiritual direction of the church. Who wants to ask the first one? Hmm. I'm giving you guys the chance just so well, I don't take a question away <clears throat> that you guys might want to you might guys might want to ask. I. I just, right out of the gate, if you were given unilateral authority to fix one problem, what is that problem and what would you do immediately to fix it? One problem within this church or the church corporately in, in the country? I think How that's open that? enough that you, okay. give, you give them that choice. That that and makes let them it, choose which of those two they choose to go with? Yeah. All right. So if you had a problem, if, if you could fix one problem in the church unilaterally, then what would it be and how would you go about fixing it? And then if they come back at you, well, do you mean that this particular ministry or the ministry holistically in, in you know, in the, in the culture that kind of gives, then they've, that's their choice to answer that. Yeah. I like this from the, you know, the, the DeSantis perspective of like, you know, the hurricane came, like I can talk about like that bridge needs to be fixed. I'm going to fix it in three days. You have the authority. What are you going to do? Don't, I don't want to hear grousing right out of the gate about the process and the system and things like that. Okay. That's good. Aaron. I would ask them or ask him, I should say, is politics an idol in this church? And here's why I would ask that. You're going to get a window into the soul of what he actually believes idolatry is when it comes to politics, because most people in most churches fall into one of two extremes. Either they're so in the fray politically that they can't really see the forest through the trees, they can't really see the big picture, or they idolize being above it all. Well, in completely abandoning any call to civic engagement. And I think the answer to that question would kind of give you an indication whether he's on the narrow road or whether he falls into one of those two camps. Okay. Here's the question I would ask. Across the street on a Sunday morning, Drag Queen Storytime Hour is being advertised as an event that is going to take place at the same time as our church service. Your response to it would be what? And I love how we all asked open-ended questions. Set a scenario, open-ended question, you tell us what your answer is. Because that's how you find out how much they have really thought things through on their own as opposed to have prepared answers for, you know, are, have they been, have they, have they studied to be taught to the test or are they, do they really know the subject matter? So across the street from where we're holding services, they are going to hold a drag queen story time hour for children. Same exact time as you're going to be preaching in this church as its pastor. 
or as an elder, I should say, uh, or serving as an elder? What would what do you think the church's reaction should be to that event? Fair? Yes. Okay. That was a good one. Thank you, Nancy. Hopefully that helped. But definitely the open-ended questions where you get them and you make them contemplate, you make them think, and you find out what it truly means out of the heart the mouth speaks. Find out what's in their heart. Brian Schultz says, I'm a lifelong Saints fan. I never believed they would win a Super Bowl. They were so abysmal for so long, as you well know. I understand your torment. Keep talking about your Lions. I'm sure it's cathartic. Now, you guys know I'm not very sensitive to other people who come to me expressing, like, I'll have people say, oh, gosh, you know, I'm a 49er. You guys won four Super Bowls in a decade. You're a pretty good team almost every year. Get out of here, okay? But if there is one franchise that knows my, my torment, the Saints would be it in terms of just decade after decade, perennial doormat. Or if you're a Buccaneers fan, same kind of thing. And so if you're a Buccaneers fan or you're a Saints fan or a Cleveland Browns fan, those three, and you're like, keep your chin up. I know what you're thinking. I've been there. Then I'll take that from you. Maybe a Cardinal fan too, because that was a pretty bad franchise for the longest time. Everybody else, no, you don't know. And as the great prophet Jim Mora once said, you don't know, you think you know, but you never will. He's back, like I said. It's beautiful. (laughs) Oh, my. We missed you. (laughs) We missed you. Josh writes, I grew up in church, rebelled, lived in sin, then came back to the cross. The consequences of my sin, however, are an ex-wife and, and, and two sons, six and nine, that I only see on the weekends. The boys have told me mom believes in many gods, and in some of the photos of the boys she has sent me, I've noticed on shelves in the background various statues of goddesses, a broom over a doorway to ward off bad energy, and there are other evidences of her beliefs. Nothing society would call harmful to the boys or anything like that. In fact, she probably thinks all this stuff is innocuous, but I know it opens spiritual doors. I take the boys to church and I pray with them, but any advice or encouragement here? Also, please pray for the spiritual protection of my boys. So, Josh, first of all, I would say to you, uh, props for getting in the fight. Um, to quote a, a, a pastor buddy of mine here in town, for, for yesterday, mercy. For today, truth and grace. So for the mistakes you made yesterday that you are willing to own up to, there is mercy. But now it is truth and grace. A little bit like, hey, let he who is out sin cast the first stone. But we always leave that verse right there. You ever notice that? We always put the period there as if that's, that's the end of it. And Jesus said, okay, you're all good here. No, he then looks at the woman that he has just granted mercy to and says, now go and sin no more. We always leave that part of the conversation out. Have you noticed that? Mm-hmm. And we just, yeah. Um, so first of all, props to you for getting in the fight. Mercy for the mistakes you made, which you have owned up to. And now truth and grace for how you live now in light of that. So good on you for getting in the fight. The most important thing that I think you could do is to let God work on your own character. And your sons at six and nine are not going to understand the dynamics here. They're just going to love their mom and their dad. And there will be a time, maybe when they're, you know, 12 and 15, 16 and 19. It depends on their ages, maturity levels, the the status of the relationship at that point in time, where more direct conversations may need to be had, but it's too early for that. And you'll, 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 you'll put the boys in a situation where they feel like they have to pick between you and their mom. The best thing that you could do is with every opportunity you have to make sure 
that you are modeling Christ likeness to them via your own character. I would be focused on that before anything else. Anybody want to add to this? I think you have a unique opportunity because you said these are two boys, right? Yep. It'd be it'd be a different challenge if they were girls. And I don't it, this it, it's immaterial that if you have a background in these things um but you you need to take advantage of that you're a man with two boys in this circumstance and you have to attach them to things that men these days too often don't it used to be the dividing line of 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 those obligations used to be obvious and clear and survival based but now honestly other than, why are we so confused on gender well because oftentimes the things men and women are doing for their children are almost indistinguishable it's just it's i have two parents i don't just have a dad and a mom mm-hmm. you be their dad you got to go even if you don't hunt even if you don't uh, um yeah i don't I have ever shot a gun think Put your boys in some dangerous environments that you'll teach yourself with them if you have to, so that they are abundantly clear that they are not meant for a sedentary life. Don't give their mother a chance who's into witchcraft to feminize them and turn their hair blue. I don't know what's going on there. You said it's nothing dangerous. But oftentimes this is something that men don't want to do. They don't want to be real men themselves. And therefore, you can't complain when your boys turn out to be just some mush that's come out through the secularizing process teach them to be men that's good that's really good all right i don't know that i have time to be fair to any of the other notes i had on my sheet so let me open it up to you guys any final thoughts on the week we've had or even the show we had here today i gotta share this i just gotta know from a kimberly watts your spitefulness makes me happy (laughs) Don't encourage him. <laughs> All right. Anyway, back to you guys. Final thoughts. We got about three minutes. I am. Uh, I'm just. I'll say I'm looking forward to kind of as much as I can disconnecting, uh, going out of pocket this this weekend. It's just going to be me, me and Ben as Bella's working uh, because the dynamics. Even though yes, we are maybe 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 having an actual primary now. Still pretty. There's a lot of BS. <laughs> There's a lot of BS. Had noticed that we all ingest on a, on a on a day to day basis, and I'll just echo what you've kind of said a couple of times, or at least hinted at a couple of times this week. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on with this process. I really don't. I can see scenarios for every every conceivable direction that this thing could take. But I don't think it's necessarily for me or Steve or any of us to know right now. Uh, take that however you would, you would like to. Um, regardless, we have to remind ourselves we are here for this moment. Part of the quote that I read yesterday from Jesse Kelly from his anti-communist manifesto saying, hey, guys, it was a 100 year process for the communists to get where they are right now. You, if you're nine years old, you're not going to see the end of this summit that we're up against. If there is an end to one, get that in your mind right now. I didn't get to the rest of this, the, the quote from his book, though. You were made for this time, though. We are here for this time. It's Gandalf's words to Frodo, which I wish I could quote from memory, and maybe I probably should. But, you know, we wish we were not in these times, but we're in these times anyway. So what are we going to do about it? It's depressing. It's frustrating. But we're here. And we were made for this. So let's go. It's Hmm. it's funny. I had Lord of the Rings on my mind, too, but it was uh, uh, Gimli when... And and the the just the pacing, uh, for, for musically the score, the writing, how they bring you emotionally, exactly where you're supposed to be. And there's a low in that movie, or they're just describing how crappy the odds are. And then Gimli just pops in, and he kind of sums it. So let me get this straight: like very little chance of victory, almost certain death. 
Oh, what are we waiting for? You know, it... Mm -hmm. it uh, out of the darkness came a great light. You know, this is... It, it, it's Apollo 13. Everybody's laying it out. Oh my god, this thing's never coming back. This is gonna be terrible, though. This is the worst moment in NASA. The press guy asks him, how do we frame this? And Ed Harris's character says, I think this is gonna be our finest hour. It's still a choice. That's the awesome thing about it. Right now, it's still a choice. And it'll never be taken away from us. That's a good word from both of you, man. That's good stuff. I mean, I think that's that. I think. I think that's a great way to end the conversation this week. So, well done, both of you. We are going to stick around and do overtime for Blaze TV subscribers. You can take advantage of that at blazetv.com slash days if you want to watch it today. And that's also where you can go to become a Blaze TV subscriber for just 10 bucks a month. For the rest of you, please have a great weekend. We will see you again on Monday. Until then, John 317.